So you can see some variances probably from batch to batch in their uh, gunmetal gray color. That's interesting. I don't know that that's a downside of any sort, but um, it's kind of something worth pointing out, I guess. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to my review of the Cold Steel Code 4. This is the clip point variety of it. There are a couple other varieties I'm going to show you shortly. We are also going to show you some use footage, show you how it does cutting through paper, cutting through cardboard, cutting through wood, and uh, getting hard work done. See how the ergonomics go for all that and all that other stuff. Talk about the specs at some point. We'll compare it against a handful of other great knives and just kind of generally tell you my experience with it. So there it is, the Cold Steel Code 4 aluminum, kind of an anodized aluminum, slick scales, not grippy at all, they're very slick, and CTS XHP steel on this variety of the Code 4. Uh, previously released in the AUS-8 steel that uh, Cold Steel is famous for using on virtually everything they make. It's a new steel, a different steel, and uh, it's exciting to get that in hand, but there you go. So we are gonna show you, let's see, first let's get into some of the test footage. Uh, this thing did pretty well. It's uh, in the paper cut test, I was actually really impressed because for some reason I just, looking at this thing, kind of the hulking knife that it is, and it's not hulking for many of you guys who just love big knives and think of this one as a relatively small one, uh, I didn't expect it to do that kind of dainty sort of fine slicing uh, cutting as well as it did, but it's got a wicked edge on it. Came with a great one, restores to a very, very good edge as well, and uh, sliced through that paper very cleanly, very impressively from all directions. And that was a great thing to see. So seeing that went into the cardboard cut test with pretty high expectations as well. You know what? It actually was extraordinarily good slicing through cardboard, too. Uh, the ergonomics, no issues. No issues slicing through cardboard because uh, I was able to hold, you know, get really good control over that relatively large handle, which fills my hand pretty nicely, and uh, slice through that just easily because, again, great geometry on that grind, great geometry on the edge, super fine edge, and just slip through all that cardboard super fast. Moved on to wood carving. After the great experiences of paper and cardboard, expected it to be a fantastic performer on wood carving, and not completely. So whatever reason, it, mainly ergonomics is what it came down to, I guess. Ergonomically, it was a little difficult to bear down on some of that hard, solid wood on that 2x4 um, if, with this sort of a grip, this sort of a hammer grip. That just sort of dug into the web of my hand and into my pinky, and it was not super comfortable to carve away at. Did it do well though? I thought it did adequately well. Adequately well. Um, it was a pretty nice sharp carver. Again, peeling off some pretty good chips. Had good control over it once again with the size of that handle. And so, as far as its performance in doing the work, yeah, I'd say it did pretty well. And I would really say that this would be a decent carver. Um, long, big knife on that, edge on that, and a good strong tip on it. I could see you doing some detailed carving with that if you wanted to. So overall, did well on the wood carving test. I also noticed that the lockup on that triad lock was actually quite a bit tighter after that test. Maybe that had something to do with the heat of the blade and it kind of warming up from the friction, uh, but uh, it did seem to bury a little deeply, lock a little harder uh, when I was going to uh, uh, turn on, what do you, depress the lock, <laughs> getting words out is hard tonight. Uh, depress the lock in order to disengage it was a little bit harder after that test. So that was kind of the situation there, but overall again, passed those tests pretty nicely. Give you a few specs on it, then we'll move on to some comparisons here. Uh, the blade length, the overall length, 8.5 inches, blade length, three and a half. Uh, cutting edge, or mm, must be roughly three and a half. Anyway, blade thickness, 0.13. It's a pretty decent thickness. Um, it is a clip point, as you can see in this variety of it, as I said before, hollow ground, satin, uh, plain edge, handle length five inches from there to there, and thickness is 0.35, which makes it a nice, thin uh, pocket knife for carrying for on an EDC basis. Looking at it this way, though, it's got a fair bit of breadth that way, from here to there. 
So be sort of aware of what pocket you're gonna stick that in and how much space you have in there because if you have a lot of other stuff you stick in that pocket, this could kind of take up some space. Then again, it's nice and thin, so maybe other stuff will kind of wrap around over the top of it. Don't know, but uh, it might be something that you want to take into consideration. There are definitely other knives that have less sort of breadth to them. Let's look at the paramilitary two, just while we're on the subject. And you can see sort of some differences there, some advantages you might have from this knife. Uh, we look at the Mannix two, that is very, very comparable actually in that size. So again, whether that's a strength, a weakness, whether that doesn't mean anything to you, thought I'd point it out. Thumb studs on it work out just, just fine. I think these are actually reversible. Is that correct? Mm, I think it is. You take this screw out and then you swap that side around to that side if you don't like how deep this one is. Otherwise, you just use it as it is. But uh, there it is. Uh, the Code 4. Yeah, there it is. It's made in Taiwan according to uh, specs from the website. Uh, and it's a good knife overall. It's, like I said, aluminum. The gunmetal gray is what they call this color um, on that uh, scale, on that handle. And what I think is interesting is that their gunmetal gray kind of varies from one cold steel, one code four to the next, or maybe just from one um, batch to the next. Let's go ahead, this is a good time to bring these out. Let's look at a couple other varieties of the code four. Here's the spear point right there. That's gunmetal gray too, guys. See the difference? There's a pretty big difference there. And since this will look better this way, I have mine in the middle and the two other varieties that I got on loan from Blade HQ on top and bottom. And there's a Tanto version. Uh, I like it, the Tanto. I like the Tanto version of this knife actually because that is such such a um, obtuse Tanto edge. So you know that's going to be really tough. That's cool. Anyway. So you can see some variances, probably from batch to batch, in their uh, gunmetal gray color. That's interesting. I don't know that that's a downside of any sort, but um, it's kind of something worth pointing out, I guess. Uh, anyway, but overall, that's you know that's kind of what you get from the two for the three different types of knives, three different types of blade shapes, I should say. You can also get um, the Tanto, the clip point, or the spear point in full serrated or part serrated. So these are not the only uh, types you can get. The uh, spear point is pretty interesting looking though. I like that big swedge carved out at the top. If I had it to do over again, that might have been the one that I had bought. So anyway, it's really cool looking. I like how they did that. They're all good looking. And it just kind of comes down to what you prefer um, for, your, for your knives, what you like better, better best. And what are some other great uh, knives that we could compare the code for against? Well, Cold Steel's got a lot of other great knives that have that triad locking mechanism that is fantastic. Um, I don't have most of them. I have this one, the Recon One. I also have a Lawman somewhere, but uh, I have the Recon One here the, in the, the Mini Recon One, I should say. The Mini Recon One, which is, I, I like it. I like this size a lot. It's got a good handle that you can get great control over and all the blade you need for the utility kind of work I like to do. Uh, so there it is. But of course, <clears throat> you can get the full size Recon 1 in all those different blade shapes and uh, I think the, the Recon 1 XL as well. So you can get that triad lock on a lot of different cold steel knives and there's, yeah, there's two of them. Uh, some other great knives. Here's the Paramilitary 2, of course. We brought out the Mannix 2 earlier. Might as well bring that out again. Also from Spyderco. Uh, if we're going to bring out another Benchmade, here is the uh, the Ambidextrous Push Button or APB. Yeah, nice. like that knife a lot. And while we're going big, we might as well bring out the McHenry and Williams. Boom. Something like a four inch blade on that sucker. Boom, ba boom, boom, boom. Um, and I think we're gonna make a little bit more room because I'm not done yet. What else do I want? Oh, how about this guy? You guys know him, you love him. Yep, there's the uh, Spartaco Endura. Endura in, this one's in V, you know, what is it in? ZDP 189. And just because I have it handy and it's cool, how about also the Ken Onion, oh shoot, Foresight. Name escapes me every time. There it is. Oh my gosh, what a mess of knives that I've got to clean up now. <laughs> but that's how the code, the code for sticks uh, or stands up and kind of compares against a whole other mess of other great knives. There's tons of them out there, guys. There's so many really good knives in this sort of large 
uh, and heavy duty category out there. Uh, the Axis Lock is great, it's very strong. It's, um, it's a very good contender for tough sort of EDC or duty knives or something like that. The Ball Lock on this one as well is really good. Uh, the, tr not try it, but the um, Compression Lock on the Paramilitary 2 in my testing has been outstanding. So I love that one. But uh, the triad lock is also just a really, really good night, a really good, good lock. Back locks, of course, from Spyderco or from whoever are pretty dang good. But uh, the triad might kind of beat them all for just overall and general toughness. Um, but you, if, if cold steel is not your poison, then you know you kind of might, might want to move on to one of those others. But I'd say they're kind of stepping up their game. I love the fact that they moved on to this CTS XHP. I love the performance of that steel so far. I need to spend a lot more time on it and with it, and I will. Um, but overall, right now I'm saying, yeah, it's a good move that they made uh, stepping up to that steel. So there it is, the Code 4 from Cold Steel. This is the late Boy Scout, and it is my Knife Blitz uh, series right now. So this is the third one in the series. Up next is one I've been really excited to review, so stick around for that. If you're watching this two years later, you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it doesn't matter. If you're watching this on Knife Blitz Day, make sure to leave a comment down there because that's how you'll be entered to win uh, the $25 gift certificate from Blade HQ. As a thank you to all my loyal knife fans out there who also are as crazy about knives as I am, I really appreciate it. And uh, at this time of Thanksgiving, I wanted to give back to all you guys with this big blitz of knife reviews. So again, if you're watching the blitz, stick around, more coming up. I'm Lay Boy Scout, thanks for watching. Uh, the size is dark, just darn near perfect. I wouldn't put it in either EDC or EDC Plus. It's one of those sort of, sort of fence sitters in my, you know, in my way of thinking. But it's a beautiful, beautiful fence sitter in, in that regard, so I love it.